once again on the first, fourth aspect of the four prayers that are so helpful for you to be able to regain the fullness of God's precious presence in you and of God working in you and through you with that precious presence as a healer. And so the fourth aspect, we've covered three so far, that God would show you how to look upon yourself. Lord, let me see myself only as you see me. How to look at others, let me see that person only from you, not from me. How to see God, Lord, let me see you as you know yourself to be, not me. In order to clear away the false beliefs, the fantasies of this human mind which loves to believe that it is independent of God and has greater powers than God and can make its own world and own attitudes when all it comes down to is that it's a fantasy. And there is no way that our thoughts can change how God made us or anybody else or the intention of God for the fullness of His loving to stay firm always there no matter what we fantasize. We have it made. And in that, we also now turn to the fourth aspect, how to handle circumstances in our life. Circumstances. Remember, we've covered God and how He looks at us, God and how He looks at others, God as God sees Himself and wants us to see it. And the fourth one is to be able to turn to God with circumstances. Now, why is it necessary? The human mind is unstable. The human mind is fearful. The human mind has no awareness of how to feel the inner strength by which when we feel our godliness, nothing, nothing can shake the awareness that we are absolutely and totally safe in this world and the next world because there is no death, nothing can harm us. Oh, it can make us lose our bodies. That it can do. It happened with many of the prophets, it happened with Jesus, it happened with thousands and thousands of people who were believers in the loving God and refused to give it up and were abused and mistreated and killed by those who were afraid of that. All of that is the sad truth of what happens with us. But we can go through all these things in peace knowing that our true identity never gets touched by this world or by what we have done in this world and that we recover the great, great, magnificent being that God has made us, kings who don't know who we are. We recover the awareness of who we are. And the wonderful thing about it is that you look at some of the great figures in Scripture. Look at the, at the disciples of Jesus when they finally received their power on Pentecost. Before that, they were weak, they fled when Jesus was arrested, but when they got the awareness of God within them, they did not fear circumstances, and they went out into the world in order to bring healing, the awareness of people's divinity to them, the end of the belief in death, and the recovery of the kingdom of heaven with inside themselves. This power in the circumstances that they faced, and all of them were martyred except one, you have that kind of strength in circumstances. I know with myself, if I become ill, that I refuse to accept illness as reality in me. Now I've been learning this steadily, 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 and there are times when I've forgotten it or my human mind tricked me into believing that something was wrong with me which was not true and I went in the wrong direction and didn't pray it enough and it shows I still need more healings. But what I do know is that 
my prayer is with sickness. Beloved, I do not accept this as real. This feels real because of my belief and my experience as a body. But I know that I am truly not a body and I am of you and there is no sickness in you, beloved. There is no sickness in you and I claim that for myself. I will not acknowledge sickness as a reality and I let you handle sickness with me as you know how to handle it. That's whether my mind is troubled or my body is sickened. I go to God with it in order to handle the sickness exactly as God wants to do it. Not me, not me, because Jesus reminds me, just like himself, I'm a know-nothing. My mind is a know-nothing and it doesn't know how to handle that kind of circumstance, just like Jesus said of himself. I know nothing. I have to go to the Father to show me what to do, and the Father shows me. Same here. I will go to the Father with illness repeatedly. Or if I'm in pain, I go to the Father with it. And there are times I get a lot of relief, and sometimes not as much relief, and I need to continually pray it and pray it and pray it. And then later on, maybe I've been distracted or I dropped off to snooze or something and I come out of it. <laughs> it's all gone. I say, I can't believe this, Lord. I was in pain. I took a snooze and I wake up and it's gone. God acted on it. And I am invested in constantly as much as I can to be aware of it as much as God enables me to think of it. I'm invested in God as my healer of my ability to recover from the false beliefs that sickness is real when it's just part of the fantasy of this world and that I am always in well-being. Now, the circumstances in our family, our relationships. It took me many, many years. I was married for 50 years before I was able to see my wife in a way of not being wanting. I had to deal with this feeling of being needy. And it took much praying of my being able to say, Lord, let me only see my life, my wife, according to you. And when distress or upset occurred between us, to learn to say, let me only handle this the way you want me to handle it. But I learned it. And in the final years of my wife's being in this world, I was more devoted to her than I was in the past years when I was essentially needed. But God turned me into a giving person who did not need my wife's love in order to convince myself of being worthwhile, of being lovable. I didn't need that. And then I was able to simply give of myself without making any demands because I didn't feel any need. God's working of circumstances enabled me to accomplish that. And then there's a world around us, this unstable dimension of life in which we cannot establish a civilization or a community based on love, of being able to care and share with each other, to be able to see everybody as entitled to being able to survive, be cared for, etc. The world is unstable and it can't give it to you. And yet, if you have offered yourself to God and you have said, Lord, I am your servant. I offer myself to you to serve you as you see fit. If that is offered to God, God now steps in because you're allowing God to handle the circumstances in your life. And it becomes God who is responsible for keeping you alive. It is God who is, in, is responsible for getting you a job to keep you going. It is God who is responsible for whatever relationships are helpful to you and to others 
to bless the world. It is God who is in charge of everything in your life, including keeping you alive, food on your table, whatever it is. It is God who does this for you. And God is a very good employer, because if he isn't, he doesn't have many employees. And God heals this world through employees, disciples, healers in God. And so God has to keep them going. God shows himself through them who have accomplished this to reassure us that God will handle circumstances. Every single circumstance God handles in your life. There isn't a thing that you do that God doesn't know how to show you to be able to do it the way God does in your interest to keep you going and to keep you in the top quality of being a God being in handling these circumstances and letting people see that it's safer to go with God than to go with our noodle brain. I hope this is helpful to you, to be able to let God handle your life, your relationships, your circumstances, no matter what, to give it to God because God knows everything. God knows everything. Do we? No. Give it a shot. Lord, I offer this moment to you, whatever the circumstances, Lord, I offer this moment to you to be handled the way you want me to handle it. Use it every single time you notice you're not at peace, no matter what the circumstance, but you notice you've lost your peace, you're uptight, down on yourself, down on others, worried about the world. Let God handle this. It's such a relief when you discover God's dependable and loving a very, very good parent to his beloved child. You have to find it out. And God's got you on that path. Go get it. Thank you, loves. Bye-bye for now.